praise God. Why is it important that we have vision? Well, for a couple of reasons. Number one, vision focuses. Number two, vision energizes. Number three, vision creates confidence in what we do here at church. And number four, vision mobilizes the people. Amen? Look what the Word of God said uh, or says. Because you see, family, if we don't have a vision... You won't be sure where we're going. And two weeks ago, Apostle Theo gave us the global vision of the church. Now I'm going to talk to you specifically about the vision for this church here. And it's going to maybe flow over into a couple of other things as well. So look what the Word of God says. Why is it important to have vision? If people can't see the vision, what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. Without vision, without direction, you'll get there every time. Amen. But when they attend to the vision that he reveals, they are most blessed. It energizes. It just focuses people. Feels like people, I know where we're going. This is what we're going to do. And I'll share with you some exciting things that's happening as well. The Bible also says, Dwight Moody says this, Our greatest fear should not be of failure, but, but, uh, but of succeeding at something that really doesn't matter. We want to make sure that we make a difference in this world, that what we do matters to ourselves and to the people around us and to the kingdom of God at large. Amen? So Jesus gave us the greatest vision ever, and we find it right here in Isaiah 61, and he says the following. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. Say this with me. The Spirit of God is on me. Now, now say like you really, really feel the presence of the Lord. Say, the Spirit of the Lord is on me. You see, if you, you receive it, it's, it, it will be so. He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. So many people are broken. And Jesus says, that's the vision, guys. Come on, bind up the brokenhearted. Proclaim freedom to the captives. Release those that are in darkness, being held by circumstances in their life. And bring comfort for those who mourn. And provide for those who grieve in Zion. Bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. We've spoken so many times about that. Is that your ashes of yesterday can be turned into beauty today. Amen. You don't have to live in the ashes of yesterday. Instead of mourning and a garment of praise, instead of a spirit of despair. And they will be called oaks of righteousness. When you're in Bragpan, then we say, hey, oaks. You'll be called the oaks of Brachpan, I mean the oaks of righteousness, okay? A planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. I'm only kidding with that. They will rebuild the ancient ruins. Those that have been in the church for a long time, they don't feel like doing it anymore. Yeah, I've been here for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, whatever. I don't know what's going on. We will rebuild you. We will help to display the splendor of God through your life. Amen? We will restore it. And we will renew you in Jesus' name. So from that scripture, from that vision statement from the Lord Jesus Christ, I see the following. Proclaim the good news. Amen. Number two is that bind up the brokenhearted. There's so many people that are broken in the church. And previously, six, seven, eight, nine years ago, we would not really talk about it. We would give you three scriptures, call me tomorrow. And I'm not making any light of the power of the word of God. But some people were really broken, and I just needed somebody to listen. Amen? Number three, bestow on them the beauty instead of ashes. We spoke about that. This is just Jesus' vision statement. And number four, they rebuild others. So we can see here that the vision of our Lord Jesus Christ is not only to proclaim the, the gospel of God, but also to get a li- and, and involved in the lives of people that are struggling, some people that are dealing with their yesterdays, and then to help them to get to the next level, help them to take next steps, in other words. You see, Jesus said this. He said, go into all the world, and, and if you find believers, then baptize them. And, and they went out and they preached everywhere. That's the vision statement. And then he said, or the Lord Jesus said then, and these signs will accompany you. In other words, I will send you out in my power. So when you proclaim the gospel, whether it's speaking to your friend or going and standing on a street corner or whatever it might be, but proclaiming the word of God, he will accompany it with signs and wonders following. So we see from that, 
we have to preach the word. Can I get a greater amen there? We need to preach it all over the world, family. Number two is that we've got to pastor the people. But not the way that you think we should pastor the people. Because people look at, say, for example, Apostle Theo. He's my pastor. I'll only listen to him and I'll only be pastored by him. Well, it's going to be a very lonely day. Because he just doesn't have the time. But hey, this is what I've found. This person that I relate to best is usually my best pastor. My group leader. My coach. My coordinator. The person that's with me in my group is sometimes the one that can speak the greatest wisdom. It doesn't have to be the person with the title or the badge, pastor. It can be anybody. You are all here to pastor one another. Can I have a great amen for that, family? All right. Don't come and ask me afterwards. Now, where's my pastor badge? It's not going to happen. Number three, disciple. Disciple people. Tell them how to go and evangelize. We, we offer lots of training here in the church, various areas, how you can be trained. And so go and disciple other people. Take somebody on a journey with you. Help them on their next steps. Show them how they should live. Use yourself as the example. But help them in their journey to become a better disciple for Christ. And then lastly, send them to do the work of the ministry. Now that doesn't mean to say send them to America or send them to India or send them to Timbuktu or to whatever the case may be. It just means send them, release them. Now go do it. You see, the, the church is to do the ministry. You must do the ministry. Say this with me. I, I pointed yourself. I, I must do ministry. ministry. Amen. So it's not just for the pastors. It's not just for some leaders, for some people. Each and every one of us can do ministry. So how do we do all of this? So in the church, we've developed a system where we have four values and four programs. So here are the first, here's the first one. Number one, know God. And how do we get to know God? In weekend services like now. We learn about the Bible, also about Bible college, but I'll talk about that a little bit better. So number one is know God. We see here that the word says, not everyone who calls on me on that day and says, Lord, 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 will inherit the kingdom of God. Just because you know his name doesn't mean to say that you'll go to heaven. You've got to know him intimately. The Hebrew word is yada, intimacy, like between a man and a, and, and a wife. Amen? But then you've got to also experience him. So as you come for prayer, as you, as you pray in your quiet time, in your group time, whatever it might be, wherever you socializing around the word of God, as you get to know him and what he can do and what he has done for you, you also experience the presence of the Holy Ghost and that can make you walk in power and in authority. Amen, family? So we see here that to know God, we create weekend in-person worship experiences like this that both the unchurched and the church people love to attend. So we work very hard to make sure that your experience here at church, from the minute that you're driving through the gates all the way to walking into the mall, coming into the church, worshiping God, hearing the word of God, Making a decision, taking next steps at the end of the service, whether you're going to go into the growth track or do this or do that or whatever it is, we create all of that in this experience and we make it easy. We make it easy. We make it welcoming. I was so encouraged to see so many people here for the very first time. Come on, let's once again, let's just welcome all those first time visitors. Wonderful to see you guys here this morning. So how else do we know God by planting churches. So for example, I just want to share this with you. We've planted over 1,300 churches worldwide up, till, up until now and growing. We've, uh, we are planting as CFC South. Okay, no, there's only the South people now that was, you know. 
because the North guys or the here guys, they not know. So in any case, we are planting another campus. Why do we need to plant another campus, family? Because we need to preach the gospel. What is amazing, last weekend we had a prayer meeting uh, at the premises at our new site in, in Alberton. And guess what? Somebody that, that left the church about 20, 25 years ago, I was told, came back and attended the prayer meeting right there at church. Amen. So we believe that we are going to penetrate because you see our ministry really uh, creates the opportunity for people to know God, to know Him, to experience Him. And that's the kind of, 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 of kingdom that we want to build also in the South. And then obviously we provide a deeper learning in Bible college. Amen. So Bible college is very important. That's really, if you've been here for a couple of years and you say, well, I know everything there is to know about the Bible, then maybe just go and call it on Bible college, share your knowledge, go and learn some more. And hey, you can also then attend our ministry and leadership certification program. You don't have to become a pastor after doing this. You can just be a person that says, I just want to know more about the Bible. And that's exactly what you can do. And you study three years and you will be qualified or certified in our ministry and our leadership program. Or if you say, hey, I do want to become a pastor. I do want to lead a church. I do want to start a church. Then this program will definitely help you. You will also be an emphasis on the word certified. You certified. Amen. You've got the knowledge of the three years of doing this. I mean, our Bible college is internationally accredited. Internationally accredited with the organization. And as you heard, we've won multiple awards against universities, medical universities around the world. We've won that. So that's a, a, a break. Amen for the, for the Bible college. Yeah, come on. Like you really mean it. Like you really want to join. Like you're going to join. Like you, you're joining. Okay. Amen. So I want to encourage you, go out into the mall, go there, go and find out. How does it work? Can I pay it off? This, what happens? How much does it cost? Go out there. Next week, we will be registering more students uh, uh, at Bible College. So you've got another week. We've made special provision because you know, um, you know that, that, that WhatsApp that you get, 55 minutes to uh, load shedding. How many of you know that one? Okay, that's the most popular uh, SMS you get nowadays, 55. So we also had 55 Days in January. So I, we understand. So what we're doing is we're opening it up for another week because we know a lot of people, whew, it felt like 55 days in January. Amen. So that's what we're going to do there. We invite unchurched people, like so many of our special guests here today, to an in-person church service because it's one of the best and most effective methods to get people to receive Christ. Family, the number one bestseller technique is you inviting people to church. Still the best. Still the best. And I mean, we have had so many first-time visitors already in the first four weeks of this month. So many salvations, all right? Our attendance is growing, all right? And so we're excited about that. You excited? All right, praise the Lord. Number two, find freedom. We do that. We find freedom in the small groups. So find freedom Therefore, confess your sins to each other. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. This is not the Roman Catholic Church, this. Amen. Just in case you were wondering. So it's not like you're going to the priest or the father and say, forgive me for I've sinned. You know, no. What we're talking about is you talk to people all the time. When you are in your deepest pain or sorrows or the issues that you're dealing with, you're talking to somebody, you're sharing with them, I'm going through this situation, what do you think I should do? And the person says, come, let me pray for you. Let's ask God to help you with this situation. You do it all the time. Now you can do it in the freedom of groups. Amen. So many, so many more people that can help you with this. Because life change or dealing with yesterdays happens in relationships. I don't doubt about you, but if I've got a massive issue, I don't go to a stranger straight off. I go to somebody that I know. I mean, woman, you know. I mean, you talk to a total stranger at the hairdresser. She doesn't even know you. She's not even listening, so by the way. Because she's like, you know, Oops. You understand what I'm saying, <laughs> amen? But you're talking to her and, and you're thinking, yes, she listens. This, this woman is the best hairdresser. Because she just, she just said, mm-hmm, I understand. Wow. 
amazing. And you think, yes, somebody listens to me. Men, I've heard, I've learned this over the years from Apostle Theo. If a woman, a, a, a lady does not want you to solve their problems. They just want you to say, I understand. Mm-hmm. Don't try and solve it. I've tried to solve it. I want to say to my wife, listen, I've got it. I've got it. One, two, three, four. Then, then it doesn't work. And I'm wondering, why? What did I do wrong? So I've learned over the years. You just say, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's amazing. I agree with you. I promise you. And they think you're the best thing since. Amen. Come on, men. Uh, life skills. That was my uh, life skill number two, that. Okay. We create small groups where people can experience community, find freedom, and take next steps. Why community? Why find freedom? Because nowadays you don't know where you're going. You just go there, this, that, who the person is. They might be, you know, doing something wrong. So you want to find yourself and amongst people that will care for you, where you can find freedom, and you can take next steps, where you know in safety I can do that. So what does it mean? To find freedom. Let me give you a couple of things. Free to join a group based on your interest. Whatever you want to do. I like to, 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 to uh, uh, crochet. Do you guys have a crochet group? Well, you're the leader. You just started the group. Okay? Whatever you want. Be careful what you ask for. I had a lady that said to me, Pastor Johnny, I know what we can do on that land there at the back. You guys, I, I think you need some help. Please help us. Please help us. You guys should put the, the vegetable gardens there. Do this. Do that. And I mean, and then we can sell it. And so I said, that's an awesome idea. She says, I'm so glad to hear it. I said, you start it. <laughs> it's still barren. <laughs> Free to lead. You want to be a leader you'll be able to get into the groups and in time you'll be uh, you can go on the training you can be a, a leader from there you could become this or that whatever it might be eventually you'll be the pastor maybe you'll be preaching here in the future number three free to make a difference in the lives of other people your testimony sometimes is exactly what other people need you can make a difference yeah but pastor johnny i got born again while washing the dishes exactly number four free to do welfare work I mean, you always want to, I want to do some things for other people in groups. Come on. And we have about over 40 groups currently in the welfare department. And they go out and they make a difference in the lives of people. Free from any yesterdays. Let go of your yesterdays. Some of you are defined by your yesterdays. Okay, you didn't like that? Let's go to welfare. Okay, I want to talk about welfare. Welfare work. Amazing. Pastor Tracy and her teams, over 40 groups. If you're looking to, to, to be fulfilled and want to help other people, then I want to encourage you, join our welfare groups. Our welfare works a separate MPO in the church. They do an amazing, 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 amazing job. And if you feel like, listen, I would like, I cannot go, but maybe I can just sow into this ministry, you can do that as well. Amen? So you might not be able to offer up your time, but perhaps you can give some of your resources. Or if you don't have resources, your resources, your time, come and help us. We need people all the time. This, just this, uh, this Saturday now, they went out, uh, fed some orphans as well as filled a couple of potholes. Come on, everybody. Seven things happens in various groups, in the various groups that we have. Number one, I find who I am in Christ. Very important. That's how I get to know God. Number two, I find what is holding me back. As I'm talking to people, I'm sharing my, my testimonies. I find and I realize, listen, there's some things that are, that are just holding me back. Number three, I find freedom solutions for my life. In other words, we've got a freedom department. Pastor Michelle and all her counselors. These guys, I tell you, uh, a word of encouragement for them because they counsel like eight, nine hours a day. Amen. Eventually, we've got to send the whole crew and say, listen, you guys got to take a holiday because it's just too much. They deal with everything that the congregation brings uh, to them. And so you can find freedom. Whatever it is, whatever is your addiction, the thing that holds you back, whatever it is, we'll help you with that. Uh, find next steps for today and my life. Hey, what do you think I should do? Should I go to Cape Town? Yes or no? Well, what did the Lord tell you? I can find my next steps for today and for my life. I can find a place where I can belong. Maybe everybody else has rejected you, but here at church, we welcome you. Amen? I find a place where I can lead. Try out your leadership skills. Go on our training. We'll help you. We'll equip you. 
Perhaps today you're the guy that is learning how to lead, learning how to go into a Bible college, learning how to do a business plan in Bible college, and then tomorrow perhaps you're the guy that's leading your own organization because of what you've learned here. Amen? And then lastly, I find a place to live out my passion. Amen? That's what we do in groups, all right? The knitting crew, the roof running crew, or whatever the case may be, you know, those kind of guys. Number three, discover your purpose. All right, we do that through the growth track. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. Some of us love the children. Some of us love to park cars. Hey, there's the parking crew right there in the back there. Come on, let's give a big shout out to the parking guys there. They just love to do that. That's their passion. They like to be bossy. I'm only kidding. Park here, park there, okay? What are you good at? Because 80% of people don't know what they're good at. And you can go onto our growth track and you can discover your purpose and you can find out what you actually love and what you would like to do in the church. And I promise you, we've got over 3,000 positions in the church where you can serve. We'll find it for you. Guess what? If it doesn't exist, we will create it for you. (laughs) Sounds like John 14, 14. We create an easy, obvious, and effective growth track where people can discover their purpose so that you can do something for the ministry. What are the four steps in the growth track? Just quickly. Step one is, what do we stand for? What are are we all about? Come and check us out. How we spend the money. And if you like it, why not become a member after step one? Why wait? If you don't like it, we'll give you 10 other good churches in the city and we can send you there. Amen? Step number two. Discover your purpose, what we're talking about now. Number three, lead. How to lead? What do I need to do to lead? What is my qualifications? And then number four, join the team. That's exactly what the growth track is all about. Because we create an easy and obvious and effective growth track where people can discover their purpose. Number two, because every believer has a spiritual gift. You have a spiritual gift. And then number three, because the discovery of purpose produces hope. It's so amazing when we see the people working in their red t-shirts, busy fixing the roads. And Apostle Tracy was saying to me, how the people were hooting, dropping off water, bringing food. Say, thank you for, uh, for fixing our city. Thank you for fixing up the potholes. Because we are making an impact and we produce hope in the hearts of people. You just filling a hole produces hope in the hearts of people. Isn't that amazing? Number four. Fourth value and fourth program is make a difference by joining the dream team. Be part of the dream team. The Bible says here, however, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task that the Lord Jesus has given me. We create an easy, obvious, and effective process where people can serve on the dream team. Because serving is the biblical mandate. Some were serving tables, some were preaching, some were doing this, some were doing that, carrying. Everybody has a purpose in the body of Christ because people need to be needed by other people. People feel the need to be needed. I want to make a difference. How can I be needed? Amen? And then we see here, because serving others meets the greatest need of the human heart, where you feel like you belong. Teamwork makes the dream work, so join the dream team. Amen? Now, how do I know that I'm being successful in doing those four things, four values and four programs? How do I know that I'm successful? Success is when people are moving on the spiritual journey that God has for them. That is success. If you are moving, family, if you are on a spiritual journey, you are being successful in the kingdom of God. If you are not on a journey... If you're only just coming to church and you're not adding anything more to that, if you know that you should go to Bible college, if you know that you should join a group, if you know that you should be on the dream team, that is your spiritual journey. Join up today and grow so that you can be successful in what you do. So we do the following things. We move people from saved to pastored by providing a small group where they can find freedom. Okay, to do what it is that God has called them to do. We move people from pastored to discipled, providing a growth track where they can discover 
their purpose. And then lastly, we move people from discipled to mobilized by providing a dream team where they can make a difference. Amen? Today is step four, right? Today is step four of the growth track. And if you want to see the tigger, then go and check it out today at step four of the growth track. How many of you know who the tigger is in the ministry? Pastor Everett, he's the t- tigger. Can you imagine that? Okay, so go and watch it. Go and check it out. Okay, so go and check it out. That's going to be quite hilarious, all right? So why do you keep on re- uh, uh, repeating the vision of the church, Pastor Johnny? We, I've heard it now twice. I've heard it three times. Some, some say, I've heard it for four years in a row. Well, look at this example in the Bible. When Jesus was praying for a man at Bethesda, and he prayed for him to be healed. And he did not receive the first time, it seems. Sometimes we have to repeat the actions. And the second time when he laid hands on him, he said, I can see clearly now. That's why we repeat it. Because the first time, maybe the second time, maybe the third time, maybe, maybe today even. So I don't get it. I can't see it. Can't see the vision. And so that's why we repeat it. Twice a year, we repeat the same message over and over so that you can see everything clearly. Amen, family? So, let me summarize. Know God through weekend services and the Bible college. Number two, discover purpose. Go on the growth track. Four easy steps over four weeks. It will change your life. Jody is the best growth track director ever. Number three, find freedom. Join a group. Be involved what we do here at church. Number four, make a difference. Join the dream team. Thank you for watching the Christian Family Church YouTube channel. Don't stop here. Join our online community and join us live every Sunday. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream and share this with your friends. Thank you again for watching and God bless you.